Okay, welcome back. One of the things I've been dealing with or, or trying to deal with is the O2 sensor uh, and having an O2 sensor delete. So I had a, a few sort of passive uh, resistor based ones that uh, didn't quite work out. The issue was really um, that I didn't read the manual. I didn't necessarily understand what it was that the uh, ECU was looking for, uh, but what I have here is the manual for it, and uh, in particular some of the fault codes. So there's two sort of sets of fault codes for the O2 sensor. So here we have uh, the heater, so it's just a, a defective heater controller. Um, don't know about that. Oh, and it specifies whether or not you can actually drive it. So can you start the engine or, you know, can you ride? Yes. Um, the other one is, uh, I think this, this would be at the ECU level, this uh, uh, 0030. This one, heater performance deterioration um, and uh, specifically uh, open circuit detector. So I think this is if the resistance is too high or if it's too low. Um, yeah, so that's that. So that's the heater ones. Now, with the actual uh, signal coming from the O2 sensor, and it really it's uh, actually a narrow band, so it's often called a lambda sensor. But um, so anyway, we have a uh, short circuit detected on it, which uh, we didn't have. We have deterioration detected. Uh, and this one's an interesting one. This is signal stuck. And I think this was the issue I ran into because in my first attempt, I had the signal uh, pulled down to ground, so zero volts. Uh, so even though it was bypassed, it was feeding at zero, but I think it just detected that the value wasn't changing um, or it could have detected it as a short circuit. The next one I did had a resistor divider to actually set it at one volt, um, which is the precise value for uh, stoichiometric uh, 14.7 so uh, and I think it failed because the signal stuck now the second one uh, uh, well sorry a third one I did just had the heater in and didn't have any sort of anything here not pulled to ground just floating and uh, and yeah it failed really quickly so I went and read the manual and I was like okay so the signal stuck one is the, the tricky one because it needs to see it change. So that sort of meant a change in tack from my area. One of the things I have is, uh, I'll just pull them out. But anyway, uh, this is the device. And <clears throat> what they're based upon is an AT tiny microcontroller, which uh, absolutely minuscule. So, there. Uh, don't know if we'll be able to get a zoom in on it, but yeah, they're small, very, very small. So, less than the grain of rice. But uh, in this, so we've got here the AT Tiny. So, we have a voltage regulator, um, got a diode just to um, make sure I don't blow anything up. Let's get this to focus. And it doesn't want to. There we go. So the resistor there is for the heater. Uh, that's a 1K resistor. So it's just a 5 volt, uh, 5 volt voltage regulator. Now under this, uh, and I did it this way because I wanted as low profile as possible. Uh, I've just, it's a breakout board and I've just uh, put the AT Tiny 10 underneath so upside down and it's programmed uh well getting on to what it does so we know it's time it, it is tiny by name and by nature so we have here uh, just the first page of the data sheet for it and it's got a couple of things we're interested in which is and hopefully it's in focus so we've got a 16-bit timer counter uh, with uh, PWM channels and we've also got a four channel 8-bit analog to digital converter okay so the trick with this was it's easy for me to just program the output 
um, on one of these ADCs to give it one volt. So five volt in, one volt out. I'm actually using this pin at the top here. Hello, uh, I'm presently talking about the O2 sensor uh, delete mechanism uh, and I need to interject at this point because I realized that in uh, what I did initially I had it outputting at 1 volt um, which is incorrect it needs to out output at 0.5 volts for the uh, stop metric value of 14.7 which the O2 sensor is looking for. Now uh, the initial one I did, yes, uh, it actually worked, uh, plugged into the bike and uh, and didn't trigger any fault codes or didn't trigger any uh, any sort of failures and whatnot. Um, but I have just been down to the bike, pulled it up, and I've been able to reprogram it at uh, to output the half volt. Still going to uh, show the rest of the initial video or edit it, the rest of the initial video where it's working at one volt. Um, really, I just halved the value that was going in. Uh, but, yeah, that's sort of, uh, you get the idea from, from the rest of this video. So enjoy the rest of the video, and uh, hopefully you've learnt about how to do an O2 sensor delete. Um, I admit that, yes, this is potentially a bit technical for people who aren't really familiar with the electronic side of it. But um, in the end, you can take your time to sort of learn how it works or the, the main point of this video is in getting across what the ECU is looking for. The ECU is actually smarter than uh, I took it for uh, initially and it has some complex rules that need to be met. So, you know, they've just made the bar pretty high for us to, to overcome it and uh, yeah, this is my attempt at doing that. and. I've got a pretty good idea that uh, the people out there selling these uh, O2 sensor deletes are probably not dissimilar to this in design um, and maybe even a bit more complex. It, we'll, we'll see. Um, but as it stands, uh, yeah, I'll get on with the video. So what I'm doing is I'm reading in the value from this pin here on the analog to digital converter. It's not connected to anything, it's just floating. And I take the last digit of its value. So being 8-bit, the maximum is like 256 or 0 to 255. Um, and I take the uh, the last digit of it and uh, and just compare it. So you know, if it's a, a 1, I output one value. If it's a 2, I output another value and so on. And uh, yeah, the end result is uh, on the green in this instance, uh, it will actually output a, a floating value that will just, just dip up and down uh, within 20 millivolts of uh, one volt. So yeah, that's pretty, fingers crossed, that'll actually do the job. This is just a prototype, obviously. Um, I've only got two more, three more AT tiny, so I can't make a lot of them. But hey, if it works, then then the job's done. Uh, programming them was interesting because uh, they're not easy to program. They've actually got a, a very unique programming interface, different to pretty much all of them. But um, yeah, fingers crossed, uh, it's going to work. I will uh, about to take this out and plug it into the oscilloscope and uh, give you a look at what it's doing and uh, what the signal, the output signal looks like. Okay, uh, so what we've got here is my programming setup. So I've got the USB ASP programmer. Um, depending upon how you configure the Arduino environment, you can program directly from it. And I have this uh, programming setup. Oh, sorry. So I can just, uh, these chips can't be programmed in circuit very well, very, very difficult. Um, apologies for the lighting, um, but yeah, I can uh, I can pop two chips at a time and program two at once. It just sort of locks down. So I had this for ages, and I had it specifically for programming these, um, but I never had a project for them. So that's the programming setup. But at the moment, it's uh, it's plugged in there. So purple is uh, the output signal, which is the green wire in this instance. So if we go up and we have a look at the oscilloscope, 
you can see it is just hovering back and forth around the one volt mark. So you can see it's sort of going up and it's, it's as random as I could make it. Um, so what I will do now is, which is the output one? Oh. This one it has to be that one. Ah, there we go. So it's PWM signal it's outputting. You can see that it's varying in size. And uh, yeah, <coughs> that's the corresponding output. So hopefully the ECU is not going to detect that as a failure. Um, the program on it is pretty simple. So if we come down to here, and apologies for the recording on screens. So we have, uh, yeah, it's all port stuff, but this is basically a copy and paste um, for the most part. So it's not a real drama. And uh, yeah, we get down to reading in uh, just what's on the, the floating pin for the ADC. Uh, we strip off the last digit, so, and it does not want to focus. Okay, um, and then, yeah, generally speaking, I've put in a default of uh, that. Oh, I've got a little offset value in there too. Um, and, uh, yeah, we just output it, wait 100 milliseconds, and then feed in the next one. So, um, yeah, that's, that's it. So fingers crossed it works, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, I actually completed, or well, did the last write to the to the bike, and um, I'm actually not going to do any more tuning to it. Um, I just consider it done. Yeah, I pulled the Zytronics logger out and uh, disconnected the wideband O2 sensor. I have put the normal O2 sensor back in, and yeah, I just just consider it done. The last last lot of changes were just so insignificant um, compared to the first lot. I mean, the first lot I did, it was just a page of red. Um, and now, yeah, everything's exactly where I want it. So I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, um, this job's done. <laughs> uh, and if there's anyone in the Sydney area that wants to borrow a uh, logging setup, then uh, yeah, get in touch with me.